ارشد the magnificent Ashad Nadeem because, uh, you know, the structure, the conditions, the difficulties that he has overcome. He was carrying an injury and, you know, in, in, in this entire uh, cause, he becomes the very uh, first Pakistani to win a silver medal at the Athletics Championship. Is marvelous and is amazing. Now, we look at the overall perspective of this, uh, you know, game as well when you talk about javelin throw. Neera Chopra from India won the gold medal. He's been absolutely superb. The government of India, especially if you talk about the Athletics Federation of India, they had invested in Neeraj Chopra. They still are where they sent him abroad for training. He went to the Netherlands and, you know, Eastern European countries to train there with international coaches. Meanwhile, Ashad was limited just to his hometown of Mia Channu. So you can, you know, identify the individual effort that is going on. Now, there's been congratulations from all over, from uh, Pakistan Cricket Board, from cricketers, from people from the uh, showbiz industry, celebrities, journalists, uh, everybody. But the fact is that words are not the only praise that Ashad requires. It is actual support as far as structure, finances, you know, infrastructure is concerned. You talk about this guy who needs uh, probably a, a nutritionist with him, a, a, a coach with him to judge his physical abilities, uh, probably a whole team of experts that can work with him to enhance. Uh, and, you know, the, the amount of pressure, because the qualification standard was 85 plus to qualify directly for the Olympics. And he achieved that. He went onwards to 87 plus for his best throw and his best throw of the season as well. Neeraj was on 88. So, you know, the difference was very slight. But uh, both of them share an Im impeccable bond of sportsman spirit. Um, uh, you know, Neeraj did come to Arshad to congratulate him. Both of them uh, shared a moment as well at the same time. But the fact is, what more can we do? I'd like to appreciate at this moment uh, in, you know, in general, the sports community in Pakistan for at least highlighting Ashad and the Athletics Championship on social media and traditional forms of media because they're the ones who kept this uh, story alive. So, I, I mean, congratulations to all of you. But we'll talk about this in detail and also discuss the avenues and explore it further. What more can we do? Then we move on to Pakistan, Afghanistan, where Pakistan beat Afghanistan in the third and final one international to clean sweep the three, series 3 0 and in the cause also become the number one ODI side in the world. It was a terrific game once again of skill and determination and I think uh, there's a lot to appreciate as far as uh, the match is concerned apart from what Mujib did. I think that was a bit frustrating. So we'll talk about that in detail. Then we move on to the Asia Cup where the Pakistan team has now returned home. <coughs> they will be participating on the 30th in Multan against Nepal and it's going to be an interesting start to the Asia Cup because of course Pakistan is facing Nepal in the opener. They're the number one ODI ranked side and then of course if you look at the big encounter they're going to be facing India on the second. So that's going to be a match to look out for. With a lot of traveling involved, a lot of fatigue because of the hybrid model, but we're hoping for a good tournament. Then South African women team has arrived in Pakistan. They're all set to take on the Pakistan women's team in a three-match T20 international series and a three-match ODI series. All of it begins in September. It's going to be an interesting series. A lot of them were very happy to tour Pakistan, including Son Lois, their uh, all-rounder as well. So we'll talk about that. And then we move on uh, to uh, some more news from the world of sports and we particularly talk about Pakistan's heroics when you talk about the IBSA World Games where Pakistan defeated India uh, in this final of the blind cricket tournament and won the gold medal. They were unbeaten in the tournament, won five out of five games. So that was an interesting uh, prospect as well. <coughs> so we're discussing all about this in detail on the show and we'll also be discussing squash as well for the Chief of Army Staff Squash Championship will be discussed in detail and we'll look at all angles regarding that as well. Time now to introduce the guests. First of all, in studios, we've been joined by cricket commentator, broadcaster, presenter and our cricket expert, <coughs> Kiasif Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum as -salam, Ahmed. I'm very well, thank you. We've also been joined uh, by sports expert and analyst, Sabir Hussain. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaikum as Ahmed. I'm good, thank you. Great to have you as well. Now we'll talk about Ashish Nadeem and celebrate the hero. We've got this report by Insa. Let's take a look and come back.
Arshad Nadeem's Pakistan athlete won a silver medal in the World Athletics Championship javelin throw category with a 87.82 meters throw in the Budapest, Hungary. This is Pakistan's first medal in the World Athletics Championship. Neera Chopra of India won gold with the best throw of 88.17 meters. Arshad Nadeem's throw barely reached 74.80 meters at the start of the game, but he made up for it with a spectacular 82.81 meters on his second attempt. The Pakistani Thor's third throw was his season's best reaching, 87.82 meters, while the Olympian from Miyajano's fifth try fell short for the 80 meters barrier. He managed to throw an 81.86 meter on his sixth and the final attempt. On his fourth effort, the 26-year-old only managed 87.12 meters, which was much below his expectations. Earlier on Saturday, the team qualified for the World Athletics Championship final with a best throw of 86.79 meters. The Olympic standard was 85.50 meters, which Nadim successfully crossed. The new victory comes after Nadim rocked into the spotlight when he finished 50th in the Tokyo Olympics and had a significant influence in his personality. Last year, Nadim finished 50th World Championship in United States. Soon later, he set a new record for the quadrennial event at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham with a throw of 90.18 meters, which is also the best throw. The famous athlete then had a surgery on his left elbow in London, recovered and then competed again in May at the 34th National Games in Goita. He had a severe setback in this competition when he hurt his right knee, which later let him miss the Asian Championship in Bangkok. But well, there you have it. All you need to know about Ashad Nadeem in this report by INSA. The details of this tournament as well as far as his career so far is concerned. Uh, as if we belong to a very rich nation as far as sports personalities <coughs> are concerned. It is very unfortunate that we have issues regarding infrastructure. There's not enough support, not enough funding. But, you know, <coughs> even with all of these difficulties, once in a while, we see an individual doing everything on his own just for the sake of the country. What would you like to add about Arshad Nadeem? Well, uh, first of all, definitely, you know, that I will salute you, Arshad Nadeem. You are real pride of Pakistan. And you brought happiness and smiles um, on the Pakistan faces, you know. Uh, Pakistan, always we struggle in rest of the games whenever we talk about, especially athletics. And he's the guy uh, from Mir Chanu, as you were describing in your intro, that uh, uh, <coughs> less facilities and... Uh, no more opportunities uh, for the for the rest of the games but the way he is leading for pakistan and uh, uh, delivering if you see his record i was just checking you know that uh, in world championship uh, athletics he's the first pakistani who got the uh, silver medal uh, any 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 sort of medal and uh, then if you see that the commonwealth games uh, he was the first pakistani once again and he created a world record there as well so uh, he, he got and uh, uh, he got gold medal there and then Asian Games and then Islamic uh, Solidarity Games and then the rest of if you see the list a big list there so I think that uh, the Pakistanis everywhere now when we are just fighting for the pride of green flag definitely we deliver and that uh, in this case I'm quite sure because I have heard his interviews uh, uh, we have watched this package right now from Insa that uh, and she was telling him that uh, he suffered with the injury of uh, right knee. What does it mean that lots of problems, but even then after his rehabilitation, he didn't give up. And <coughs> with these uh, kind of you know, um, opportunities and these kind of facilities, if you're doing this fantastic job for Pakistan, hats off. Definitely, Asif has you know, brilliantly put it uh, in words that really define the character of Ashan Nadeem as well. Sabir, what would you like to add? Because uh, you know, Ashad is one such story. There must be millions of tales uh, since the inception of Pakistan that have gone in vain just because they didn't have enough support. Absolutely, you know. I mean, uh, first of all, you know, I would like to congratulate you know Arshad Nadeem and the whole Pakistani nation. It's you know, it's been a proud moment for for every Pakistani. And hats off to him, you know, uh, the kind of basically he basically won the you know silver medal for Pakistan. His representation, you know, in such kind of you know athletes in Pakistan, obviously, it's, it's, it must be must be a proud moment. And in the introduction, uh, you know, Ahmed rightly said, I mean, we need basically such kind of a players and we need infrastructure as well. I basically, you know, belongs to such kind of area like Larkana, some rural areas of Pakistan. He basically belongs to Mia Chanu, you know. In these kind of, you know, areas, obviously, uh, every player basically needs funding, financing, infrastructure as well. 
So uh, there will be a more kind of, you know, Ashad Nadeem in future as well. We have seen in, in boxing as well, in soccer, you know, in snooker as well. So we have Pakistan basically has such kind of a talent, especially in small areas. But government, you know, government of Pakistan, you know, so some, uh, you know, sports departments as well, leads some kind, some kind of proper in infrastructure as well. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful moment for every, every Pakistani. Yes. Absolutely. It is a wonderful moment. And as Sabir said that, you know, with the right amount of investment and infrastructure support, we can produce many like Ashur Nadeem. And there must be so many young minds who would now look at, you know, especially if you consider Mia Channu and its surroundings, they would look up to Ashur Nadeem as a hero. He needs to be celebrated as one as well. So I think there needs to be a dramatic amount of uh, things done <coughs> for support as far as the government support is concerned, department-wise, corporate entities. I always talk about a public-private partnership. There are many in Pakistan that can support the case of Ashad Nadeem and athletics in general in Pakistan. Now we take your focus uh, to Pakistan's series against Afghanistan, which they've won convincingly. <coughs> We've got a report on that by Insa. Let's take a look. Pakistan's 3 by 0 series win over Afghanistan saw them overtake Australia for the number one spot in ICC men's ODI rankings. After a brief sojourn with the pole position in May, the series whitewash over Afghanistan helped Pakistan return to the number one spot in men's ODI rankings. Going into the third game, Pakistan led the series 2 by 0. They had won the first ODI by 142 runs at the back of the brilliant bowling display. The second game was a nail-biting thriller, with the men in the green aching out a win in the last over of the game with one wicket in hand. Pakistan won third ODI against Afghanistan by the margin of 59 runs after a solid second half of the innings with a bat. Despite a shutter in the middle with a bat, Pakistan finished strong on the slow pitch, making 268 with Muhammad Rizwan and Babar Azam scoring half centuries. In reply, Fahim Ashraf snarled too early on before the spinner struck at the regular intervals to keep Afghanistan in check. Mujibur Rahman fought back with 26 Six balls half century, but Pakistan eventually had too much on board for Afghanistan to win. Shadab finished with the three wickets to his name as Pakistan completed a whitewash. Prior to the Afghanistan series, Australia were at the top of the ranking tables with 118 rating points, while Pakistan were placed second with the 115.8 rating points. Now Pakistan sit atop with 118.48 rating points, while Australia at the second rank with no change in their points. There you have it. All you need to know about Pakistan series uh, against Afghanistan. 3-0, a clean sweep convincingly. This report by Insa details everything that happened in the series. Asif, you must be a happy man, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. You know, that Pakistan have won this series 3-0. But slightly disagree with this word that convincingly. Mm. If you see the first match, if you see, you see the second match, even the third match, Afghanistan put a very, very good effort there. If, uh, especially in the second ODI. That was a brilliant game. Mm. And... Uh, uh, some of the people, they were just thinking that, is this the same side? Is this the same Pakistani side which is playing against Afghanistan and they're chasing 300? Uh, one moment, one moment we had uh, uh, thought about this, that the Pakistan is in trouble. And the rest of the series, uh, lots of positive from the Pakistan, but some negatives are as well. Uh, in the third match, if you see that uh, 68 for 5, and then Mujibur Rahman came there and uh, he played a stunning knock. But you know that I was just thinking that why Babar Azam is not able to, to break the partnership. So this is really important in a uh, uh, 50 overs game, in ODI game, that if two players are uh, performing well, two batters are performing well, this is what uh, we had watched in the second ODI as mm -hmm. well. I mean, almost a tail, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 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 Mujib Rahman is in tail. I mean, you know that yeah. uh, uh, he's not a regular but, but batter. We, we go back to the same question, Asa, because we saw lack of Yorkers. We saw lack of depth bowling. And that's one of the reasons they were trying to bowl length or short and Majib was easily hitting. That's something you don't do in the middle mm. or last overs. Uh, well, Ahmed, we expect that uh, from a captain like Babar Azam, that if a batter, as I said, that if you're not doing something out of the box to break the partnership, it means that uh, you are an average captain. Uh, in, in ODIs, this is really important when, and when a side like Afghanistan, they're chasing 250 plus and 260, and then 60 for five, and then even then if they're <coughs> making 209, it means somewhere you guys are lacking in your planning. And then if you have a planning, then the execution is not perfect. And when there is no execution against Afghanistan, it means that you will struggle against um, Australia, mm. England, India, New Zealand, because they're big sides and uh, their homework 
uh, they, they do their homework fantastically. So I think that Pakistan team just require their planning. And uh, uh, thanks God that the Mickey Orta is there and he will depart after the India's match. Uh, uh, when, when your head coach, when your mentor is with you, definitely it always gives you some confidence. So uh, Pakistan teams, once again, they were not good with the balling. Yes, we have won with 3-0, but still do remember in the second ODI, Haris Rauf, once again, he had the same problem mm. that he bowled nicely in the, in the first match. He was the man of the match, Pfeiffer, but in the second ODI, off the line, and he was not up to the mark. So these are the problems with the Pakistan team, and especially the middle order batting. A serious question mark is there. Definitely. You know, there have been certain things that need to be put into perspective as far as the team is concerned. Sabir, what would you like to say about the series? Uh, you know, uh, most of the points, basically, I agree with Asif. That obviously, consistency is very important for every bowler, every batsman. And since, uh, since as far as captaincy is concerned, of Babar Azam, you know, every captain basically makes mistake. And in my opinion, I might be wrong, but when Babar Azam has improved a lot as far as his captaincy is concerned. You know, we have to give respect to other teams as well. We, so we are basically, you know, sometimes too much choosy and that, that <laughs> we should, you know, uh, go for the kill every time. <laughs> so we have to give, you know, respect to like Rehman Allah Gurbaz, you know, uh, Ibrahim Zadran as well, the, the opening partnership they have made. So, I mean, uh, we have to respect some other teams as well. Like, um, you know, uh, we still remember <coughs> 2003 World Cup, you know, uh, we basically picked initial wickets against Australia. Look at Andrew Simon, the, the innings kind of, he has played against Pakistan. So, every basically, Ricky Pointing, he was, you know, badly missing as his other bowlers like 434 made, made uh, you know, uh, by, by South Africa. So, every captain basically makes mis mistakes. Yes, Babar Azam in the past, he basically used to make some mistakes. Like in Asia Cup final T20 uh, 20 against Sri Lanka, you know, not bringing Mohamed Nawaz as well. But, but I think... The, Babar, Babar Azam is improving day by day. If you, if you talk about the, the collective performance of the series has been phenomenal. I really, you know, uh, quite happy. I'm, I'm basically quite happy the way basically Pakistan performed, especially in these kind of, uh, you know, pitches. It's a very good practice for Pakistan, especially for Asia Cup and uh, also for the World Cup as well. These kind of tricky pitches will, will you know, give you some, some more confidence. Imam ul Haq batted beautifully, you know. Uh, Babar Azam himself, Mohammad Rizwan basically came to the party, especially in the third ODI. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we basically uh, hit, cannot, uh, we cannot hit boundaries in every over. You need to adjust the conditions. One question uh, for, from, um, from my side, uh, maybe to, to Kiyasif or maybe Ahmed that, uh, what about the players? I mean, do they have the awareness as far as the pitch reading is concerned? Mm -hmm. You know, a, a captain basically, uh, you know, came to the toss, uh, reading the pitch. What about the other players? I mean, so there has to be, you know, the, the reading the pitch mm -hmm. is very important for every player, I think, rather than only captain. Absolutely. So I think at this stage, uh, every international cricketer should be able to look at the pitch and say, no, this is how I'm going to adjust mm -hmm. my technique. But we to also talk about the top performers of this series. We've got a report by Fiza. Let's take a look and come back. With a 59-run victory over Afghanistan in the third ODI, Pakistan won the three-match series in Sri Lanka 3 by 0 Pakistan topped the ICC men's ODI team ranking after winning the ODI series against Afghanistan, and they are still in that position. Babar Azam, the team's captain, had worked hard to help his team recover the top spot in the ODI rankings. Imam ul Haq, the player of the series, shined throughout the series, especially in the opening two matches. Imam ul Haq did really well and won the player of the series award against Afghanistan. He has been good in all the matches and this match made him even more special because he played well under pressure. As a result of their respective 60 and 67 run performances in this encounter, Babar Azam and Rizwan encouraged their team to achieve 268 runs. In the first inning, Afghanistan's bowler performed admirably and held Pakistan to a respectable total. Since the beginning of the inning, Pakistan's bowler have dominated as they have claimed several early wickets. In this game, Shadab Khan bowled brilliantly and claimed three wickets compared to Shaheen Afridi's two. Although the game was exciting, it was clear that Pakistan had defeated Afghanistan and won the series. Both the hitter and the bowlers for Pakistan gave outstanding performances and they worked well together throughout the series. There you have it, the top performers in this report by Fiza. Now, Asif, you'd like to address the question posed by Sabit and at the same time, then we'll come to other <coughs> things as well. Yeah, that question is very, very genuine question that... Uh, um, being a team player, you know that uh, right before the match, captain used to go to the uh, pitch or the manager or your head coach, they used to watch that what kind of pitch is this. 
And I think that nowadays, because um, whenever we cover domestic cricket or you know the rest of the leagues, um, uh, I, I have been observing this thing that the rest of the team they used to come and they used to watch that what kind of surface this is. Either it would be helping for the spinners, fast bowlers, or the batters. So uh, it's an art, of course, and uh, uh, you learn with the passage of time. Because you know, sometimes it defeats it. I mean. It, 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 it is really it is really <coughs> tricky for you you know that you are thinking that the pitch is good for the batting but when you go and decide for the batting it helps to spinners or the fast bowlers but uh, sometimes overcast conditions and if there is a bit of grass on the pitch that how you have to use being fast bowler how you have to use that grass so it's an art and of course that if uh, uh, if you're playing cricket as uh, Ahmed was saying right now that uh, this is this is an art and being a batter because Ahmed himself you're a batter mm -hmm. and you understand that uh, if you go and what on what kind of surface you're going to play this is really really important for rest of the team not only to the captain or the manager or the head coach that they used to go and they uh, uh, f uh, uh, as 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 for us I have been observing this. I think that uh, the rest of the team they used to go and they observe mm -hmm. this first thing. The second thing that uh, we're on the on the now we are the top notch uh, ODI team. Yeah, and in the world. Yeah, yes. uh, in, in the world. See, mm -hmm. it, it does not make any difference for me because you know that I want to see that the barbarism uplifting the trophy of World Cup. This is really really important for me. Absolutely. Because I've been waiting this for a long time. And uh, 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 Sabir was talking about that sometimes we're really choosy about the captaincy or about the players. Well, to be very honest, that uh, Sabir, if you see the barber, yes, he's improving, no doubt. But even then, if he's making or committing mistakes in the in the in the uh, captaincy, you would have to uh, uh, definitely tell to him that you are doing this, you are doing this. This is wrong. Why you're not using your spinners? If you think that Babar is doing 100%, then I think I'm not with you. Because uh, Babar Azam, still he had uh, done some mistakes. You should agree with me, because uh, 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 the use of uh, spinners, Salman Ali Aga, we haven't seen him bowling there. And uh, then your middle order batting, what was in his mind, that how he was using his middle orders, why he hasn't given the chances to the youngsters, these are all the questions which definitely you will ask to the skipper. Absolutely. And I think, but for the very first time, uh, the team looked like that they had a plan. So I'll, I'll agree on that, that the team management, the captain, everybody was on the same page. But K. Asif and Shweb Akhtar have one thing in common. Both of them have waited so long to see Pakistan lift a trophy in India. So I think that, <laughs> that is one positive news. Uh, but Sabir, it's interesting because like I said, there is a complete think tank now with the team. You've got uh, Mickey Arthur as director, then you've got Mr. Bradburn as the coach. Then you have Rehanul Haq, the manager, Hassan Chima on the back end as the data analytics expert. Uh, a, a lot is going on in Pakistan cricket. Abdul Rahman Saab as the assistant coach as well. So, you know, all in all, it's a complete team and Inzimam Ulaq, the chief selector, but authority, a majority has been, ha has been given to Babar Azam to select the side he wants. So, all in all, all in all, I think that we're heading in the right direction. We are basically heading to the uh, right direction. You know, I mean, let's appreciate some... some uh, previous coaches of Pakistan. It's not about the individual effort of Inzamam Olak or Mickey Arthur. Let's appreciate Sak Sakla and Mushtaq, you know, the selection committee, Mohammed Wasim as well, you know, some 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 previous Harun Rashid as well. So let's, you know, appreciate it, uh, the old, you know, the, the members of, uh, uh, you know, inducted in Pakistan cricket board. I mean, Pakistan, you know, won the series against the Netherlands, against Australia, against New Zealand, against West Indies, and South Africa as well. So Pakistan, you know, under the captaincy of Babar Azam, they have been phenomenal, you know, in ODIs. So that, that's why that is the reason they have become number one team. And yes, they are the basically team. So we used to have, you know, some individual performances like, like I mean, Wahab Riyaz, you know, Emma Shehzad as well. We have seen some controversies as well in the past. So let's not go back to the past as well. But for last two and a half years, in the ODIs especially, you know, we have improved a lot as a team. And, you know, uh, there are basically collective performances like Shine Shafri, the Harish Rauf, Shadab Khan, Babar Azam himself, Imam Ul Haq, Fakhar Zaman as well. So, no, so, so, so they have been performing really well in ODI. So, that mm -hmm. is the reason we have become the ODI uh, number one team. And also, there are a couple of batsmen in our, in our, from our country. They are, you know, uh, the ranking one, two, three, you know, uh, in ICC ranking as well. Same, same for the bowlers as well. So, we have been, uh, we have been basically performing. Why? Because we have been given proper chances. Le uh, you know, let, let's talk about Babar Azam's captaincy. You know, in, in test matches against Sri Lanka, he has been phenomenal. But, you know, we, we basically sometimes talk, uh, so much talk about the negatives as far as, you know, the, the captaincy is concerned. 
let, let, let us talk about you know let's talk about one one thing babar azam in the in the day one he basically shine shafridi was bowling when the fully well he basically brought mm -hmm. sulman ali aga and he picked up picked up the wicket imam ul uh, took the catch so that was you know out of the box thinking so this particular thing we we we, we basically was, must not discuss so there are some positive things we we, we you know we always talk about absolutely mm -hmm. these positives indeed will keep on discussing but the team is looking in great combination and being number one right before the world cup is something special for you it will give your side a lot of confidence now we will of course discuss many things on the show further but right after this break stay tuned to sports extra Welcome back to Sports Extra. Now there are many things, like I said, that we will be discussing in detail, and including the fact that the Asia Cup is all set to begin from the 30th, where Pakistan take on Nepal in the opener at the Multan Cricket Stadium. We've got a report by Palvesh. Let's take a look and come back. Asia Cup 2023 is set to commence on August 30. A total of 13 games will be played among six teams. They are India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal. and afghanistan this time asia cup 2023 will be hosted by both pakistan and sri lanka pakistan is going to hold the first four matches of the tournament at multan and lahore stadiums while the next tournament will be held in sri lanka in order for fans to see the pakistani and asian cricket stars in action close up tickets cost have been set at reasonable level in consideration of pakistan hosting the asia cup for the first time in 15 years The tournament will be played in 15 over format where India, Pakistan and Nepal who are in group A and Afghanistan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh who are in group B will compete for the continental title. After the first round, one team from each group will be eliminated. In the opening match, Pakistan and Nepal will lock horns with each other at Multan Stadium. Pakistan has included South Shakil in their 17 members ODI Asian Cup squad while Tayyip Tahir will be the travelling reserve. Asia Cup 2023 final take place on September 17 in Sri Lanka. There you have it all you need to know about the Asia Cup in mm. detail and the fact that uh, the teams are all ready they've been arriving in Pakistan Nepal's here Afghanistan is also here so it's going to be an interesting one that report by Palvesha gives us the details. Sabir all set for the Asia Cup very less time in between for the Pakistan team and you know it's a, a bit of a trouble now play one match then travel then come back so it, you know things are difficult. Yes, um, obviously these are basically difficult, uh, difficult things. But to fatigue might be another thing because you know traveling is is a very difficult you know thing for Pakistani batsmen, bowlers to adjust. I mean, uh, I mean my in my opinion, I think uh, Mohammad Wasim Junior and Fahim Ashraf should go ahead as against against Nepal. You know, Harris Rao should come in. Uh, Shahin Shafri should be rested again. Nasim Shah along with Nasim Shah, they, they might two uh, you know two of them, both of them must must play against India on second of September because you know you have you need to travel. last night they came to pakistan then you know tomorrow or day for tomorrow they have to play against against neither uh, against nepal as well then they have to travel to kandy as well so i mean these are basically difficult things for pakistan for last two and a half months they have mm. been playing consecutive you know test matches the, the hotness uh, in sri lanka as well so, uh, some um, lpl some some uh, some cricketers were playing lpl as well so i mean uh, these are the things which mm. pakistani management look after because they have to play asia, uh, asia cup then world cup as well So I mean, these are you know small things Pakistani players need to be utilized properly as far as fast bowling department is concerned. Because we have some, some we have seen good bench strength. Fahim Ashraf, you know, a ball phenomenally well again in the third ODI, along with Mohammad Wasim Junior as well. Shadab Khan is you know uh, picking up mm. some kind of form. Nawaz so was also decent. In Nawaz, the match, yeah. Nawaz, you know, bowling of Nawaz and also the contribution with the bat as well, mm -hmm. uh, al along with Sal Salman Liaga, you know, that was fa fantastic for Pakistan. That that was the reason Pakistan, you know, put a uh, 260 six year something. So mm -hmm. I mean, Pakistani ball. Bowlers need to, you know, uh, uh, should be managed properly because of, you know, th this kind of travelling uh, kind of fatigues as well. So I mean, I'm ahead of to, you know, Pakistani batsmen because Imam Ulak Fakhar Zaman. I would like to see, you know, Abdullah Shafiq might be given some chances because th this might be the time. Uh, may might be uh, instead of Fakhar Zaman, mm -hmm. Kiasif will be happy. <laughs> uh, so I mean, uh, Saw Shakil, he was, you know, uh, uh, he was looking good at uh, the third ODI. He basically given a chance and. 
finally he has been he has been included in the Asia Cup squad. Tayyip uh, Tahir, uh, not to worry guys because you are a youngster, you have you know a long career ahead. So I mean, heads off to PCB management to include Saul Shakil because of his technique. My goodness, you know, a 30 year old youngster. <laughs> well, this is going <laughs> the right way we want. Well, Asif, I, I agree on one point that you, you know give some other players a chance before the World Cup because you never know you might have a trouble with the opening. Somebody can get injured, God forbid. So you know have one or two backups ready. But overall, uh, what do you have to say about the Asia Cup in general when we talk about mm. Pakistan's chances? Here is uh, another <coughs> disagreement from you guys and you are giving uh, an opinion and then you are giving your statement against yourself, mm. House. Uh, earlier you guys said that the think tank is working so nicely. Yes, they are. And now you, you're telling me and you're asking me mm -hmm. that you can give chances to the new players so maybe they could do some miracle in the World Cup. No, no, so, so how, how, how does that mean that the think tank is not working? I never said that. You uh, never said that, I, I, but I'm, 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 I'm getting that sense. Mm -hmm. Why? How? Because how are you getting that sense? I'm telling you, give me a moment, dear. I'm just saying <laughs> Abdullah Shafiq should be given a chance. How does that mean that the think tank is not working? If think tank is working, then why should you, why you are not including that Abdullah Shafiq right before this series in the, in the, against the Afghanistan? Mm -hmm. Why you haven't given chance to the new players uh, only Saud Shakil got chance in one match. But that will run out. Yeah, yeah and uh, see, if, if you are planning for the World Cup, if you're planning for the Asia Cup, then the think tank should think about the youngsters. Mm. And if you are uh, confident about your senior players, so uh, give them chances in the Asia Cup and the World Cup as well instead of uh, testing other guys. Mm. So I think, bit confusion in your statement and in the in the think tank well, as I think well. our, our <laughs> statement is clear Asif is still confused because Sabir mentioned Fakhar Zaman that's why Asif is now running around the bush but look the fact is that <coughs> all, all we're saying because you've got a number of games and let's for once consider the scenario of the World Cup which is a round robin stage you're playing consecutive matches there is no relief there as well so at least you need to have guys you know we all remember that Champions Trophy semi-final against England in 2017 where Mohammad Amir wasn't playing and we had to get in Roman Rais. Even the commentators were pulling their hair. This is a guy who's debuting in the semi-final of the Champions Trophy. Thank God luck was on our side. So, you know, not every time Lady Luck's going to be on your side. So that's, that's one of the particular reasons. But uh, while this was being planned, Asif, as a broadcast and a commentator yourself, when this hybrid model was being given, uh, do you believe that the PCB should have just for once thought that you know, then there's a World Cup, the amount of fatigue and travel might be a bit of a trouble for our players. Uh, well, I think that sitting in studios and giving these arguments and my opinions, uh, it's pretty much easy for me that I'm telling that the think tank is, uh, the think tank looks a bit confused. Mm -hmm. But to be very honest with you, uh, you're asking me this question that uh, they th uh, have they thought about this, that the players, they're traveling to Sri Lanka, coming back to Lahore, mm -hmm. again going to Sri Lanka, Sri coming Lanka. back here. What does it mean that there is no uh, planning at all, to be very honest? If they're thinking that there is fatigue and they're, they're traveling, they should tired, then they should be thinking that, all right, fine, we're just giving up. Forget about this hybrid model. Mm -hmm. We'll go for the cricket. I will play on the one uh, venue. Or the so entire tournament in yeah, Sri Lanka. Yeah, entire tournament in the Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying, guys, they're confused. Give <laughs> them some chances. Give them some time. And the second thing, I'm not saying anything. I haven't said <laughs> single word about Fakhar Zaman. <laughs> he has started this debate. I haven't said in today's show, I never said anything about Fakhar <laughs> Zaman because, because everyone is watching the how he's playing. The so only reason only Asif <laughs> is criticizing the think tank because he's sad that Asif Ali is not being considered for the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 is the, that is the only reason. But gentlemen, on, you know, obviously on, on a concluding note, if you, you know, if we move towards the closing of the show as well, uh, you know, particularly Sabir, uh, the team right now, the combination, the environment of the dressing room. Let's be honest, you know, we've seen an age of Pakistan cricket growing up. This has got to be the most stable dressing room or team that we have seen in a while. Let's be honest about that. Absolutely, you know, because I have been following cricket for more than three decades, you know. Uh, I'm basically for 39, mm -hmm. 40. Just a youngster, a youngster. <laughs> a, young, a youngster. A <laughs> youngster, just given an under 19 trials as well. You know, the age verification system in PCB, you know, I mean, all, all you guys know. You know, to be very honest, yes, the dressing room atmosphere is very important and appreciation from every player's performance very important we have seen in t20 world cup you know when nawaz was you know a bit unlucky shadab khans you know he was basically desperate to win the matches for pakistan and babar azam himself you know shine shafri these basically 11 kfo for his for his captain and also for haris rauf as well 
So I mean, you know, for for last two and a half years, maybe right. it might be three years, they have been, you know, playing as a team. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some individual performance, there were some failures as well. <laughs> but in spite of failures, I mean, they were basically supporting each other. So th that's very heartening to see. Absolutely. We haven't seen in past as well. Absolutely. So there are basically uh, almost 15 to 17 matches of Asia Cup and World Cup. So that's why fatigue is very important. Absolutely. Try to utilize your I'll, 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 I'll take your argument there, Sabir. Thank you very much for joining us. Ki Asif Ahmed, thank you very much to you as well. Look, at the end of the day, you've got to consider that there is a fine line that has been drawn uh, between consistency for the team and you know some a phenomena or a system that you call QKN which is Kudrat Ka Nizam. <laughs> you know there's a big line difference now the team is performing brilliantly everything is going according to us with the number one ODI ranked side in the world but that being said I just want to give you an update where Pakistan's World Cup ODI jersey has also been uh, released it's called the Star Kit if you want to see it go to the social media platforms of Pakistan cricket board <coughs> so obviously we'll be discussing this in detail as well but the fact is that World Cup fever will continue the Asia Cup fever will continue Pakistan is going to be facing India after a long time for multiple occasions so we're going to be enjoying that as well on that note for me and the entire team it's goodbye for now